All right. Hello and good morning, y'all. Top of the day. Uh, as the title says, and as the screen shows, I want to do a video on VHS today, which if you're watching this, you're not familiar with what VHS is. It is a brand new 4v1 asymmetrical kind of game. Um, and I'm really into it. I'm digging it. It's really different compared to uh, most of the other ones out there. You'll see a lot of people kind of compare it to like Dead by Daylight because, you know, it's 4v1, it's horror aesthetic. Nothing like DVD. So just immediately get that like out of your head. Uh, but I'm going to kick off by playing a monster called Wart and I'll try and explain the game and like what I think of it. And uh, kind of, you know, try and make coherent thoughts, but I'm still brand new to the game. I just picked it up yesterday or like two days ago. And I've only played it for like maybe four or five hours. But what I've played, I've really, really enjoyed. So I'm really grateful I got a uh, I got a beta key for it. So that's quite awesome. Um, so the general gist is when I spawn in uh, as killer, you're going to see eight, essentially eight icons on the map. These are all tables. There's two of each kind of table. There's like a fire table, like a like a electricity table, a curse table. Um, just I forget the other one. There's like four different icons you'll see, though. And survivors need to craft a weapon at these tables, and they need to hit the monster with each type of weapon at least once. Uh, if the monster gets hit by all four of the weapon types and damaged by it, then he's killed, match is over, and then my job is to kill all four survivors. As Wart, I'm going to be given a few different abilities. I will be able to put armor on myself, so if they hit me with weapons, I can tank the damage, and if they try and deal damage with said weapon uh, for too long, the weapon will break. I will have an ability to kind of send out, like, a sonar wave so I can kind of see where people were a few seconds prior. And then I have, like, a quick pounce to jump on people, which I think is freaking awesome. All three of his abilities are really good. He's made to track, close the gap, and just get the kill. Fantastic. And there's two other killers. There's, like, a werewolf, which I will not be playing. Their werewolf uh, can, like, howl and, like, throw people off. Uh, and can, like, uh, get bonus speed and, like, get enhanced hunting. Alright, so now, as killer, you have 15 seconds to pick where you want to transform, or it's going to auto-transform you. So if you're lucky in the early game, you'll be able to get near uh, near another uh, survivor. Let's go take him out. We actually have a survivor right here, so let's see if I can jump and close the gap. Uh, one thing with this game is it is way less about doing crazy like long chases and it is way more in tune with po uh, poking in going for a quick hit poking out you gotta spread your damage evenly because if you dedicate too much time on one survivor uh they or teen a teen in this game if you dedicate too much time on one teen at a time um they'll be able the other teammates will just take advantage of that time that you uh you kind of gave them i thought i heard someone going there um, take advantage of the time that you gave them to craft weapons and take you out. Alright, let's use my sonar, see where they are. So you're more or less going to be poking in, poking out, and trying to get the kills when you can. Alright, so this one already has a flamethrower. I'm going to try and close the gap on her. Because I only have a few seconds of armor, so I can tank her damage for a few seconds here. Boom. Okay, I'll send her back. While she's hit, she actually can't attack me back. It actually, like, makes... It just disrupts her and makes it so she can't attack me. Which gives me time to kind of move away. Okay, these are the weapons I'm going to try and get me with. This guy's a little bit too far away to actually do damage. I have armor up, like I was mentioning before. So, she committed too hard to me with armor up. And because of that, uh, the armor broke and so did her weapon. And I took no damage for it. So perfect. We want to just keep rotating, keep injuring, and if we get people down, cool. And now I'm also in what's called enraged mode. So, enrage mode. I actually don't want to hit him right now. Much I want to close the gap onto him? Not right now. So, enrage mode's really cool. So, if you hit multiple different survivors, like back to back to back, it's three in a row. I don't know where you went. I heard you. Um, you get enraged. And when you're enraged, you actually down people in one hit. So I want to find someone full health to down. 
So yeah, you can do that three separate people in a row. You can damage them to get enraged. Or uh, if you down somebody, you can feast on their body for way too long. Perfect. And now we're really spreading the pressure here. And Survivor's more or less going to bleed out. Uh, when I play a Survivor match after this, you'll kind of see like what happens when you're down to Survivor. There's a bit of a mechanic called Spec Kill Mode. So you're not just like sitting there down the entire time, like looking at nothing. There is something you can do gameplay-wise as you wait. But I'll show that when I go over to that side. So yeah, so far this is really fun. Um, one thing I love about this game, and it's something that a lot of asymmetricals get wrong, doesn't matter what you are. Uh, oh god. <sighs> Almost got me. If you look at the, by the way, before I go into that, if you look at the top of the screen, it shows like how much damage you've got from each weapon. So if it's hitting you, uh, there's like a little like damage drain you can look at to be like, oh, I'm about to uh, get taken out. And as killer, you more or less gotta try and get behind cover to uh, avoid getting completely decimated by the weapon. Alright. But yeah, so what this game does that I think every other asymmetrical kind of fails at, like, terribly fails at, is the, um, time pressure. So this game actually doesn't have a time limit. There's, like, the only objective is to kill. Both sides. You gotta get kills. That is what you're after. Um, and because of that, you can take your time to properly strategize. You don't gotta worry about, like, sitting back for a minute and have, like, 19 generators pop. This is all about getting in just the right coordinates, getting in the right area, and taking people out. And I really appreciate that, because I feel like in this game, if I die, it is generally my fault. Not to say that cheese doesn't happen in this, like, there are, there are cheesy things that can happen in this game. Like, very cheesy things. But nothing that's, like, mind-meltingly frustrating. Alright. Do some sonar. I have armor. You don't screw that up. They're trying to make a fire uh, fire weapon down here. They keep failing the uh, their their skill checks, so it keeps highlighting it down there. Let's move on down. I'm in a pretty good spot. But just because I'm in a good spot... Doesn't mean I'm necessarily guaranteed to win right now. Stuff in this game can turn very fast. But having three people down is going to be a very hard thing for them to overcome. Especially because when you down people in this... Uh, they lose their weapon. Which is... Less than ideal. Alright. My armor's gone. I can't afford to, like, approach her. So she has that for free. They, they, they have free rain down there. Let me get an update on where they are. Okay, so, yeah, so we got some crafting, we got some out here. They're all up at the moment. Because I hit her there, she actually can't attack me again for a few more seconds. I'm a little bit too far back for her to do damage. This guy just tried to sneak up on me. But he doesn't have a weapon. He may have actually just gave me the slip. I think he may have crouched in the corner and went down these stairs. Yep. That's what I thought you did. I thought as much. Alright. If 
but at the moment I am in a complete state of control here. What's up? I saw one go through the window. That's fine. Got him. Dead. Use my cover effectively. Here's hoping they don't actually revive him because that would really suck. But so far, so good here. You're gonna get me, you're gonna get me. Oh god, that was bad. That was almost really bad. One thing you might notice is that survivors in this game, or teens in this game, don't actually have, um... I'm gonna feast on it a little bit to try and get some rage. Um, don't actually have, like, resources, like, pallets to use and things like that. They just have vaults and, like, kind of, like, quick reactions, like, maybe, like, hide. Um... So, like, actual, like, resource management in this game is not a thing. Per se. This game is all about quick reaction, breaking line of sight, and kind of, like, getting into cover. Because you can give killers the slip really, really easy in this. Shockingly easily. Alright. Let's see where they're at. Alright, here's another mechanic. The Rift from Beyond forming. So the Rift from Beyond kind of happens after a period of like no damage or like as the game kind of goes on. I as a killer can go inside this Rift. And if I stand in it for long enough, I will be able to get the auras of all the survivors in real time on where they are. So there's literally no guesswork for me. It's almost like a guaranteed free hit. So, there they are. What's up? Dead. Alright, now we're just gonna figure out where the other two are. She was too close to me, dead. And now we'll see if we can get our fourth one. I think I mentioned earlier there is a way to bring back uh, fallen teammates. The chance of them doing that right now is very slim to none. I've, I've only seen it happen a few times. There's like a book on the map that you can find to revive someone. But I mean, it's one person left right now. And they haven't got me with one even one of the four weapons, so... This is looking fairly done. And he hit himself in the locker. And we're done. Yeah, that's that's killer in this game. It's really fun. Like really fun, but that team just freaking fell like fast. So that's that. Now let's play a quick survivor game or a quick teen game. Teen I'm way less like in tune with. I haven't played as much teen as I have monster. But it's pretty fun as well. A little bit more overwhelming, I think. At least right now. It's just my early impressions. For all I know, the balance could really swing towards teens. I'm just not as good with it. I also think the game might be a little bit loud, so I'm just gonna bump that down just a tad bit. Cool. 
do that. That should be good. We'll see how this goes. Uh, monster search tends to be a little bit quicker. There's always way more uh, teens kind of searching the monsters, which is should is how it should be for a four v one. You really need like that roll of one to uh, have people actually playing it, or rather the team of four, like the roll of four to actually have a lot of people playing it. We well, need both, but still, the the queue for like teen is definitely a lot longer. Is what I'm trying to say, but it's not necessarily a terrible thing. But yeah, sorry, like, my, my commentary of that video, or rather, like, that match was probably, like, very disjointed. But I do enjoy it. Like, I just like the lack of time pressure and just being able to strategize what to do. And I feel like if I make a mistake or if I get hit, it's genuinely my fault. Because I'm running into areas, maybe not paying attention to, like, if anyone else is around. Because I can go into, like, ambush one person, but someone else can kind of be waiting in the room to hit me with a weapon and intercept me. Like, it's really easy to kind of run head in, like, head in as a killer in this game and get completely shredded for it. So I'm very lucky I was able to kind of record like not even really getting damaged that entire match. I got close to taking damage a few times, but like never, they just never quite pulled it off. Yeah, we'll see how this goes now. Yeah, it's just, it's just fun. Like, I like the dynamic of having, like, all those different tables and, like, you know, needing to, like, kind of, like, know how to counter each weapon because each weapon's a little bit differently. You have, like, the sword that kind of, like, does, like, these big ground slashes that goes through walls. You got the really close range but quickly damaging flamethrower. Uh, there's one, like, where you can, like, read out of a book and it does, like, this big spell and damages the monster. I've seen, like, toy helicopters that, like, shoot down, like, lightning beams. Like, it's, there's a lot of cool weapons you can craft out of these four tables. Or, like, the four kind of tables there are. So, it's, it's pretty cool. But we'll see how our uh, survivor experience here goes. So there's a little bit more to it. When I eventually go down this match, I'll kind of show you, like, what you can do when you get downed. Um, but survivor really is get to a table, craft the weapon, hit the monster... Um, don't get hit. There are vending machines kind of hidden on the map, and if you go to a vending machine, you can get a cola or you can get a candy bar. Candy bar increases your max health, because if your max health drops down to nothing, you're dead. Or your health drops down to nothing, you're dead. Um, and then the cola gets you, like, more stamina. Uh, there's actually a pinging system, so if I find things like tables to work on, I can ping it for my team. And the other mechanic of this, too, is even if, let's say, like, a monster's already taking fire, taking fire damage, you can still craft a fire weapon at a fire table or keep yours. Because if you hit the killer with that again, it's going to stun them. So it's just nice to have that for protection. You know, it's just it's just a good thing to have. So just because, like, he already gets, the monster already gets hit by, like, one of the kind of weapons doesn't mean, like, you're down and out. Or, like, you're kind of screwed for having it. Alright, so they're pinging something down here. Okay, so there's probably two tables right over there. And a table right there. Okay. Hello. I'll craft with you. We'll make that flamethrower up. Skill checks are super easy, but you might want to be a little bit patient with them. Okay, we're facing a wart. The wart just got our, uh, our location. So he'll probably be down here in a second. Oops. But all the killers are genuinely very different. Oh, I forgot to keep crafting. Oop. The other kill I didn't really get to talk about is, like, Dollmaster. Dollmaster can actually put down dolls in the map, and, like, if you get close to it, I would say, think, like, Dead by Daylight hag traps, is, except instead of, like, a phantasm popping up that you can teleport to. Um. There's the vending machines. Um. Instead of that, you can, uh, like, dolls kind of pop up and, like, start stabbing other survivors and stuff. It's really weird. He 
dropped. Let's see if I can go ahead and catch the killer off guard here. You got me. I was too close. Crap. So I'm gonna need to find a teammate to heal me. Oh, and as we run, there is like a scratch mark sort of thing where it kind of like leaves like, um, almost like CRT filter noise. It's really hard to track as Keller, to be honest, like the CRT sort of stuff on the ground. Okay, so someone got him with fire. I don't really need the flamethrower then, unless I want to stun him, so I'll hold on to it, but I think I would rather go craft a weapon here. So I'm going to go ahead and discard that and try and get a new weapon, the Cursed Sword. Let's go ahead and do that. Go for it. I'm gonna hope he's not coming this way. Because I kinda just wanna get the sword built. If he was coming down here, he would have already been here, I think. Yeah, he's chasing someone else. Okay. Also, the running animation's a little bit... Uh, it's a little bit goofy. I will say that. Let's heal. Thank you. I know this person. The healing system's a little bit weird, so you gotta kind of like hold it for like press an old space bar and like keep it bouncing inside the area here. So it's a little bit different. Got him. That's one. Okay, he only needs to be hit by one more weapon and the match is over. We've kind of like just barreled through this. So I'm not even, I don't know if I'll be able to even show like what happens if you get down to Survivor. This killer's uh, kind of fallen pretty quick here. But it doesn't really necessarily mean the game is over. Not by any stretch. Okay, I think he's going to want to stop me here, so I'm actually going to get away. Like, logically speaking, if he sees me, like, on the last table that needs to be done, he's probably gonna, like, want to cut me off from it. But he didn't actually get down there. Oh, we got him. Someone else killed him. So I never got to go down. Damn, dude. I couldn't even show it. But that's okay. We got him out. Oh, that was like his first game. He's like a level one. So maybe that was like their genuine first game. Which sucks, but this is a closed beta. It has like very limited invites onto it at the moment. So. You have a lot of new players just kind of coming in, like, as the beta waves come in. Like, I only got onto it two days ago, and I've been waiting for months, so. But yeah, that, that's VHS. Uh, so just for reference, because I couldn't show it, like, if you die, like, as a teen, uh, you can go into, like, what's called spectral mode, 
and you just look like a big floating baby. I hate it. Like I think it. I think it's my my opinion. It's the worst thing in the game. I do not like spectral mode, but you kind of like float around like it's like a baby apparition, and like you can ping things uh, like a book to like revive you if you're completely dead, or you can pick up like little health pickups randomly scattered on the map to get some health on you. So when people come up to pick you up off the ground, like you have a lot of like recovery already done. Um, or you can crawl as a slug, but if you do that, you're going to get, like, skill checks. Um, and you really don't want to fail them. So, yeah, that's that's really all there is to it, but it's very bizarre, so, like, I wanted to show it on video, but I'm sure if you look up VHS gameplay, you'll see it. But I forgot to show, like, one match of each side, and it went really, really well, so I'm pretty happy about that. The VHS, it's really fun. It's an asymmetrical, it's nothing like Dead by Daylight, so you're thinking this is, like, going to be, like, a DVD replacement, it's not... It's a much longer, very, like, a much more strategic kind of game to play. It's more, it's, it's less of a game of like cat and mouse, and it's more of, like, almost like a game of, like, chess. You always can be, like, one step ahead of the other side. There's no time pressure. Like, you just gotta, you gotta come up with a game plan. You gotta stick to it. It's very poke in, poke out for everybody in the game. Poke in on the monster, try and get a hit. If you don't, get the hell out of there. Same thing as killer. Poke in, get a quick hit. But you don't want to waste too much time. Like, you want to prevent other people from crafting weapons. Like, it's very... It's very, like, just hit-and-run style, but man, it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. I think it has a lot of potential, uh, and hopefully as it gets closer and closer to its, like, open beta, uh, it, you know, it just keeps the momentum going, because I think it's really good. And there's, like, other stuff to it, you know? There's, like, progression systems and stuff, um, but it's very it's a very quick progression system. Like, I've only done, like, a couple of hours, and I'm already done, like, with almost the first, I would say, sixth of the progression. Probably like the first sixth uh, for one character, so it's like not too too bad. And there's stores, and there's like dailies and things to kind of get, and like challenges to do. So like there, there's like other stuff to kind of like work for if like that's your kind of thing. Um, but I'm gonna call it on the video here. I really like this game. It's VHS. I'm probably gonna be playing it on and off for a while now. I like it. So thank you all very much for watching. Y'all have a lovely day, and as always, toodles, y'all.